In Creo Parametric, you can import a neutral file. One of the benefits of neutral files is backwards compatibility. So I am in Creo 7 and I'm going to open up a neutral file that was generated from Creo 11. I will start off by clicking the open button in the ribbon. This takes me to my working directory. There's nothing in here. I will go to the type dropdown list and change the filter to neutral files. Here are all the individual part, subassembly, and top level assembly neutral files that were exported from the previous video that I made. And I mangled the spelling of electronics when I was changing the name. So this is the file that I want to open. I will click on the import button. This imports the import new model dialog box. And here we have the ability to choose the profile. Before I get into that though, I want to mention some of the options right below it so I can show how they appear also in the next dialog box. You have the option to use templates, but I am not going to check that. Usually I do like to check that, but I've noticed that when I use templates, I can get errors and bad geometry from the import. So I'm going to leave it unchecked. Then we have the import type. It is set to automatic. You can change it to geometry, facet, or curve to make sure that you are importing that kind of geometry. Then we have an option to enable ATB. That's the associative topology bus so that you can actually update some files with changes that were made to the original native files. Okay, so that's good. For current profile, well, I don't have any other profiles defined for importing a neutral file. There is a details button. When I open that up, it opens another dialog box with a bunch of different tabs. On the models tab, once again, we have the option to choose templates. And if we do so, we can specify which part and assembly model templates that we want to use. Here's enable ATP. Here's the import type again. There is a drop-down list for model accuracy. You have a choice between automatic, internal, or external. And it means that you're going to import with the internal model accuracy, the one that was saved in the file, or external model accuracy. I'm just gonna leave it as automatic. You can import a facet model as an assembly, and you can place imported components with the aligned coordinate system that is checked by default. Let's go to the surface tab. There are a bunch of different options here. The only one that is checked is simplify surfaces. So I'm just gonna go with the default settings. There's not too much information about these different options in the PTC help, but if you have certain qualifications or requirements for your importing, you can choose them like keeping B-spline surfaces, reparameterizing non-analytic surfaces, based on arc length and performing G2 continuity fixes. Underneath curve, we have the ability to reparameterize based on arc length, which is selected by default. And for polylines, there are several choices that you can make. With the point tab, there's one option for creating labels for the points. From the topology tab, there are a bunch of grayed out options, but there are some options here that are similar to the import data doctor, like closing gaps between surfaces and repairing unsatisfied geometry. You'll notice that if you check this one, you also have the ability to correct tangency conditions between surfaces. I'm gonna go back to the default settings and there's also a filter tab where you can choose what you're importing, whether it's surfaces, points and annotations, and curves, you can choose whether you want to import them using the automatic settings or yes or no, and whether you want to import blanked entities or not. So if you make changes to these different settings and you wanna use them over and over again, you can save the profile and then load in the profile later on, or you can use a config.pro option in order to use these different settings and have those settings loaded every time that you launch Creo Parametric. But anyhow, I'm going to cancel out because I didn't actually change anything. 
A uh, couple other things to mention in this dialog box. You'll notice that the type is grayed out here. The type is stored in the neutral file itself. And also we have the option to generate a log file. I never generate a log file. Then we have the file name. This is the opportunity for me to correct the name. Sorry, it took me a moment to figure out the correct spelling of electronics. Okay, with everything selected here, I will now click the OK button and we will give this a moment to process. Okay, so that took a few minutes to process. Let me spin this around and take a look. And it looks pretty darn good. And first I noticed that, uh, you know, maybe we have this one component floating out in space. I actually went back to the original assembly and found that the component was uh, sitting out there in space to begin with. If we take a look at the message area, we're getting a warning that the design intent is unclear and it recommends that we use geometry checks in order to get more information. If we take a look at the model tree, the parts have the regular part icon, but the sub-assemblies and top-level assembly have a different symbol. But all in all, the import looks really accurate compared to the source geometry. And let me expand one of the parts if we take a look at its structure. It has a coordinate system and then just this neutral ID, sort of like what we have at the top level assembly and in some of the different sub assemblies. So again, we see that we have the coordinate system, neutral feature, and all the different components underneath there. So there you have it. That's how you can import a neutral file in order to collaborate with others while protecting your intellectual property or being able to share in an older version of Creo Parametric or in other words, backwards compatibility.